That's Toffee. She's uh, she's juggling. How are we all? Hello, everyone. Uh, who's that? Welcome, welcome, Amina, as a family guest. We're going to mangle your name at the end, Amina, Amina M. Anyone else, anyone else fancies joining? We'll mangle your name, and you can use it as a, a cool ringtone. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I grown up. I grown all of mind in pots. I think the old uh, the old predictive te predictive text isn't very good, is it? What's some? What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mark's got fleas. <laughs> uh, Hi, evening, everyone. Mark. Welcome. If you've just come over from Instagram, this is your first time with us. Well, welcome. You're all hour, having a conversation. We? I can't work out what you're all talking about. Uh, Alfie Luca was my first day in sixth form today. Bit nervy, but went great. Oh, oh. that's so good. Kiki's really enjoying school yeah. as well. It's lovely. I've got my first day at college on the 13th of September. <laughs> that's a bit nerve wracking. I've got so much reading to do. Uh, welcome, Amina. We have a new new family guest. We welcome, will... Amina. We'll sing your welcome song at the end. Yeah. Love screen going blank like in the theatre, Marcia. Uh, Della Nixon, yes, Bobby Mine were the best this year too. I, I, I think you're talking, what are we talking about here? I think we're trying to... Hi, Reem. Who's uh, that? First time as a member. Uh, here's my first... Coco. Let's say hello Coco, to you, Coco. Coco, we'll sing you a welcome song yeah. as well. Going loco, Coco. Uh, Hi, Creator Holic. Reem AW, Kathy Bell, Pam PMS 76, Stacey's Baby Shower looked amazeballs. Was it, it amazeballs? It was, oh. it was, it was. Um, Charlotte P. It was just so beautiful, you know, as we arrived, as you're just driving through to it, around that area, it was just so beautiful, the houses and the Is and it the like gardens. the Hamptons? When I woke up in the morning and it was so grey, I thought, oh my God, poor Gemma, because Gemma, her sister, was organising the whole thing. It was like, got to have good weather, got to have good weather. And as we pulled up, it was so beautiful. The sun had come out full oh, wow. whack about an hour. It was a beautiful day, wasn't it? And she's got this beautiful French barn outside, just like the roof. And um, well, a lot of you have seen the pictures, haven't you, on Instagram? It was just idyllic. But what I always love when I go to Stacey's is, there's always loads of children just running around barefoot. Is it it's like just... a sort of commune almost? He, well, yeah, but it's all the same family. That's so... what I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's like everyone knows because everyone. Because Stacey's sister has a little boy who I think is about eight months older than Rexy, but they're identical with exactly the same length, blonde hair and blue eyes and stuff, and they just run around all the time. Oh. And then Stacey's got a chihuahua. And Actually, a sausage dog. And the chihuahua, the chihuahua is a female, but it's just constantly jumping on the sausage dog, trying to shag it. Ooh. It's so funny. Uh, so I went with Judy and Jane. And so you was... could say that the chihuahua's a hot dog. The chihuahua's a hot dog. Hot. Oh, thanks, Mads. <laughs> uh, yeah, dog. as in feeling hot, you know, I think. It gets... Look, guys. Isn't it cool? Darnie, you're not going to hear any responses from me. Why can't I hear you? <laughs> can you hear us? Comment below if you can hear us. Um, good evening from Dubai. Hi, Lucy Kitson. So it was a lovely time. Can I just ask, the photos that Stacey does have a sharpness and colour that's almost impossible to recreate. How well, her dad, her dad is a photographer and her dad was taking the photographs yesterday. Ah, I was going to say they it look like so... photos that have been taken on a different format. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Oh, sorry. She looked so beautiful. I was telling the guys at Loose Women today, she had, you know when people talk about blooming in pregnancy, a radiance about her. I couldn't take my eyes off her. We were all like, Stacey, you look like you've stepped out of a Disney film because she had this gorgeous plait with all these flowers, this beautiful pink dress. Oh, my God, she looks stunning. But Joe, he's just, oh, my God, Mark, he's so lovely. Oh, he looks lovely. He's just so charming and kind and welcoming and... And he's just, he's really charismatic, Joe. Very charismatic. All right, in a minute, you're going <laughs> to... Bloody hell. So um, it was just, it was just a lovely afternoon. It was lovely. Yeah, she has, she's absolutely beautiful. She really is. Uh, Mandy Wilson, well done for, for reminding us. I haven't forgotten. Can I remind you about my niece Erin's 16th birthday? We'll yeah. sing that at the end, absolutely. Thanks, Skyly. It's a great T-shirt. Thank you very much. Dedication. like it. Um, yes, I have to say, she was... No, she, I wasn't Russ, no. She was blooming so... Um, she was she was blooming so much. Could, can you explode from blooming too much? Mark, stop being silly. I think she could. She's almost so full of colour. I mean, those photos are amazing. Her dad takes amazing photos. They're 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 lush. It's making me want to do most of your your Instagram on a proper camera. 
I know, it's really you know what I mean? nice. It's just, it just elevates photo. it to a completely different level. No, no, I mean, mostly she does her photos from her own camera, but like yesterday, it's he was there... It's not a normal camera, I tell you now, it's not a normal camera. He was yesterday taking proper photos, it was yeah, so lovely. Nice. Uh, Ruth Blandford, I'm in Cornwall for two weeks. Oh! Don't tell Ruth, her. I'm so jealous! Gabrielle likes my hair today. Uh, Sky Lee, even I can't take photos like that, impossibility. Uh, you take good photos, Sky, you take good photos. Um, Ross Souch, now do you, on EE, e. what's EE? E? EastEnders. Oh, I see. I used to be in it. Oh yeah, of course you were. Are you feeling better now, Mark? Better than this morning, absolutely, as you saw what in my post. What was wrong with you this morning? What, oh, you your you mental health. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, don't get offended. <laughs> what did, oh yeah, I, I no, but the way you said it. Oh yeah, your mental health issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dawn Clarico, she was so funny on Loose Nadia, they showed a picture of Fagin, Ron Moody. Oh, God. Uh, but Mark, you started so humming a tune from Fiddler on the Roof. It was so funny. So, That's a bit of a Harold was part. talking about an ex boyfriend, and she said he looked like Fagin. And they put a picture up of Fagin, and I went, da 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 dum dum, ba da 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 da. Oh, and Jack, my most favourite floor manager ever, came running up in the bit just to, he said, just to warn you. I do think you might have Twitter on your back a little later. And I said, why? I literally couldn't imagine what it was. You were singing from Fiddler on the Roof. Did you do the arms? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Nat. So then when we came back, Nats. Charlene was like, Nadia, why do you try singing a tune that's actually from Oliver? So then Oof. I had to sing Um Papa. And then she went, what do you think of that? As we went to Christa Berg and it was like, it, like I hadn't sung and like I hadn't done anything. It was all quite cringe. Where was Christa Berg? He was down the line. Lady in red. Yes. It's I would make a good Nancy. Thank cheek. you, Jenny. What was it? We sang that song, didn't we, for a quiz? Mark, but you keep looking at me instead of hurts. It's where it is now. It's where, where I want to be. be. But I only know. No, I hardly know her. Okay, that's enough. This feeling Hi, Nanny Di. Nanny Di's in the house. Hi, what? Nanny Di. Uh, 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 uh. You're so small, I can't even see you. There you go. Hey, uh, is this happening now, guys? Nanny... Yes, Mum, it's happening. <laughs> One day you'll get this. It... <laughs> Matt, Mum, I'm speaking to you now. It's happening. It's like, it doesn't get more live than this. Um, so welcome, everybody. Let's, 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 let's... Everyone send Nanny Di a big hug. Look at all the Nanny Di, hi, Nanny Dies. Oh, that's nice. Kate Payne, welcome. Stay to the end and we will sing you a welcome song. We will. Well, Nadia will, in the manner of... Uh, what's it called? What's the uh, song you did? Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof used to fascinate me as a kid. We should talk about favourite musicals. Mm. Changing the tone for a bit, let's go to the serious story of the day, really, of the last two days, which is the sad, sad passing of Sarah Harding. Mm. Um, I'd be lying, lying if I didn't say I, I knew about the band or anything like that. I know that Cheryl's part of it. But I did know that she was diagnosed uh, recently, well, two years ago, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, and... I think her mum's message on Twitter just about broke my heart. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talked a little about her today on, on Loose Women, but it was very upsetting for Carol, who knew her. Did and you? of course, Carol has been clear now of breast cancer of for the last course. six years. Yes, yes, yes. And um, we also had um, Frankie Bridge on today, and she did a tour for a month with Girls Lad. Like she said, you know, we weren't close friends or anything, mm. but we knew each other well. They supported their band. She said, you know, she was an amazing girl, just like full of life, just mm. like loved life, all of, all of those things. It's really sad because actually... She wasn't sure whether she was going to share with the world that she had cancer, but somebody saw her having chemo and let the press know, which oh, I think no, is just really? so awful. So, so that awful. Is awful. And then a couple of months ago, and, and everyone was sort of saying this at work today, that because it, everything had gone very quiet about her, people mm. assumed that she'd turned a corner and that she was getting well. So it was a huge shock. Mm. Um, it was a huge shock, I think, for, for people. Certainly all the people I spoke today that knew her found it, yeah, deeply shocking because I think people thought she was turning the corner. Now, her book came out a couple of months ago and she, and she really did agonise, apparently, over whether she was going to write this book. And she said, but the one thing, if I can just save one person's life, mm. then it will be worth it. And I think every single thing that we've seen written about it you know, headlines and everything. There has been a lot, big spreads. 39, 39, like this is so rare. Well, I'm sorry to say it's not. Mm. Bar skin cancer, it is the leading um, reason for death for women in the UK under 50. 
Is it? Really? Yeah, and that's what people don't realise. Everybody wow. thinks it's... Now, the point of saying that is because this is what she wanted. She wanted people, rather like Jade, you know, remember when Jade... Jade has saved so many people's lives who probably wouldn't yeah. have got a smear before that would. So it's just really simple. It's just like, join up to one of the apps where you get the monthly reminder to just check your boobs because if you find something early, my God, God, your chances of recovering are so great now. They're so great. It's usually when people, uh, not usually, but often people are so scared. And I'm one of those people. I've had this mole on my neck that I have been scared about for years. Finally got it looked at and it's fine. But imagine how awful I'd be feeling now if it hadn't been fine. And I think mm. I think that happens so often, doesn't it? We get scared and then we just march the same. Oh my God, I don't want to face it. Yeah, so so with this outpouring of sadness for Sarah Harding and her family today, I think the really proactive thing that we can do is make sure that we do check mm. once a month, every month. But that we did actually um, showed a film on Loose Women today how exactly to do it. how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, and, and it's important, both breasts and testicles. I mean, you know, it's... I mean, men are supposed to check their breasts yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed chest, yeah. a number of men over the years that have had breast cancer, yeah. so... Ashley says Titty was on Lorraine this morning talking yeah, about was. it. Well, this is it. It's like friend my friends. Media. It's like my friends, Hannah and <clears throat> Real Titty Gritty and Dutch Tits Off. All of you know, they're all my... We call, we call... We're very dark. We say my breast cancer friends because we all met on a, a cancer fundraising trek. Mm. And, you know, I texted them this morning and said, you know, I'm so, I, I just can't imagine how you're feeling because I know it just triggers. And it doesn't have to be the same kind of cancer. Just, I think, just hearing of someone so young mm. passing. And, and Hannah said to me, she said, Hannah's my friend that a lot of you follow now that we had the real scare earlier mm. this year that she had, it had spread to her liver. It hadn't, thank God. But she said, it was quite interesting what she said to me. She said, hang on. Because, um, my God, I mean, I think she was diagnosed at 23, my friend Hannah. Mm. And she said today, she said today, and I was really quite surprised by this answer. She said, um, I couldn't sleep last night, was getting irrationally angry about it all. Wow. And I thought that's interesting, mm. isn't it? Because of all the triggers for yeah, those yeah, people yeah. with cancer. Anger, because it just feels so yeah. brutal and so pointless. Darchy tits off, who many of you know, says, I, feel re I felt really strange yesterday, couldn't stop thinking about it. The fear of it coming back never goes away. Sometimes you're fine. Other days, like yesterday, can just trigger you. Anyway, love you all so much, da, da, da. But, yeah, so, uh, so my heart's really going out to all those people that are living with cancer, all the families of people mm. living with cancer, because it's, it's a scary time when somebody's so in the... The yeah, and I guess dies. every time someone in the spotlight does die, yeah. however privately or whatever, you know, it's such a triggering moment, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. It triggers your own fear. Emma Carter says that today Copperfield's website for checking boobs went down, presumably because there was such a rush of people looking at it. A um, number of people here saying how Loose Women has helped them uh, in terms of checking themselves. Thanks, Loose Women. Jenny yes. Scam for showing the clip of how to check your breasts. I did it today and I'm ashamed to say I haven't done it before. Well, no, but don't be ashamed. That's great. I yeah. mean, Frankie was really honest because Frankie did the trek with me on Copperfield and she said, you know, I did that trek and still I don't check my boobs. So, yeah. yeah. Look at this, Kim Lakides. I don't think doctors take young people seriously they when don't. they go to the doctors Too about often. any worries. My husband mm. was misdiagnosed for a year. When they finally took him seriously, he had stage four cancer. Oh, and that was okay. one of the things. Did things change after Jade Goody? Did they, because... Well, the, you're not supposed to have smears before you're Yeah, but, but there is a reason for that. It's like, because that is still, it's far rarer under that age. Right. And actually to disturb the cells of the cervix too young isn't good for it. Like right. mammograms, you know, they don't offer them before 50 in this country because they believe that it outweighs right. the good, it outweighs right. the bad, because okay. if, actually if you've ever had a mammogram, you know. Yeah. Um, um, and sad to, to realise she was two months away from 40. I mean, that's such a notional anniversary, but isn't it? It's all, all those sort of weird things, those markers in someone's life. Uh, a tragic, tragic loss. Um, I, um, I think her mum's made another statement, has she? Has she? Her last days. Says, no, she says see. Sarah Herding's mum talks of her last days. Did you just... Yeah, that was what it? we were just reading from. Uh. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's obviously 
occupying a lot of the online news uh, websites at the moment. Um, the other, one of the, some of the other stories today is that the London's tube network saw the busiest day in 18 months. Um, well, every single one of us, it was Carol's first day back today, and she was the I've, only one in the meeting. We were all in our cars. I've never been in such hideous, tube, cramped tubes and trains today it was. And I started out thinking, oh, I, I didn't realise it is still mandatory to wear a mask on the train. Yeah, yeah. On the, but I thought you had a choice. But No, no, it's mandatory. So on, I sat there with my joker choice. mask on everywhere, frightening everyone. Um, but, but it was rammed. Everywhere was late. My car was 15, 20 minutes late. Nobody made it to the meeting. Everyone had to do the meeting by Zoom. And every single person across the building was late today. So. Yeah. Spokesman for TfL, Transport for London, said, while many children use buses, fewer use the tube, suggesting that commuters were returning to the network. Uh, Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, said, I'm delighted that tube ridership continues to increase as more people return to the office. Weirdly, though, if you walk around London, as I, I was in central London today, so many preps are still shut. There's a lot of, there's a lot of places that have been forced into closure. So um, there aren't as many places available for your coffee, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so the busiest day, the rush out looks like it's back. Um, this story snagged me, sticking with a health story in a sense, the quiet early signs of dementia. Mm, glad you sent me that. <laughs> Well, no, but I read... It was a little bit more reassuring, actually. Well, and it might have been I started for you, it wasn't out, for me. I started out being really worried and then and then just felt a bit better for some reason by the end of time. I got read to the end of it. Just as a yes-no question, who's who knows someone or, or whose lives have been affected by dementia or Alzheimer's? Give us a yes or a no. Someone you're related to, someone you know that's... that's been diagnosed or sadly passed away. Two of my friends, both of them, two of my closest friends from college, both their mothers... Everyone's yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, look. Look at that. Wow. That's why this story is trending today. Wow. Good God. That's virtual. I mean, that's well, it's the 98% number, of it people. Is, it's the number one killer of women in this country, and it is much higher in women than it is yeah. in men. And there are strong links between that estrogen deficiency and... Well, there was a statistic, wasn't there, in, in coronavirus, saying that the, uh, in a day, more women die of dementia than they do of um, COVID even at the worst yeah, period, yeah, the worst no, days the of COVID. biggest killer of women yeah. in this country. Um, wow, look, what's vascular dementia? How does that... Well, vascular dementia is... is, is... Sorry, I've lost you. Uh, Jenny Ward. You, you, oh, I'm so sorry, you lost your dad to yeah. vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is different, isn't it, from Alzheimer's, mm. I think. Um, because, of course, well, this is an article in, in The Telegraph based on a research from a study conducted by University of Oxford, uh, but some which has some of the more sort of subtle... I always get worried about these health stories that say these are the more subtle signs of illness because if they're subtle, then we all stand the chance of having experienced them. And one of them that really got me... So, clever, because I read further, because this one I'm worried about for me. Uh, <laughs> apparently, if you can't hear as well in a noisy restaurant or you struggle to hear, this could be the first sign of... Could, could be. be yeah, no, but, I no mean, but, but do you know what's positive about that? Now, I only found out last year that you're supposed to have an ear test, hearing test, every year, like you do a sight test. Sorry? So, and places like... Um, no, I didn't realise that. Maybe so. I, I did, nobody knows that. And what I found quite reassuring about this was that, you know, they say, get your ears checked, because actually, if you are losing your, a bit of your hearing and you actually get something to do, to you know, some kind of hearing aid... That could actually slow down. Yeah. The so my problem is whenever I've read anything about Alzheimer's and dementia, there never seems to be any solutions. It's like, oh, well, that's it. But there's new drugs coming in. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, all I trot out important... is that you should eat avocado and drink coffee. Well, I don't know why you keep saying about avocado. <laughs> what you need to eat is a Mediterranean diet. Yes. Just like... And actually, they say in this article, a, a lot of stories given to doing puzzles and Sudoku and all this sort of stuff for dementia. Using your left hand. But up. actually, one of the most important things, well, it's a whole load of things, is oxygen to the brain. So whatever you know you have to do for a healthy heart, you have to do that for a healthy brain. So a lack of oxygen to the brain, 
no exercise, i.e., is, yeah. is, is a big problem, which I now worry about because I don't get any cardiovascular. You don't, anymore. do you? No. No. Because no. your knees won't let you. I mean, the you can see like... why all these compounding so things. So I'm absolutely 100. Mm. Like weightlifting, all that sort of stuff. Mum, we've if you're just there. become members of Virgin Gym, and I'm going to start doing a proper weight training program. Nanny Dye, can I just say, Mum, if you're if you're listening, you've got to do more than lifting. Empty You've got to be out rolls. of breath. You've, You've got to be, got out, be of out of breath. Because, Mum, you said to me the other day, you said, well, as soon as I get out of breath, I can't do it. But that's the point. Um, Anne Henderson, my ex-husband had dementia. He went from being an aviation engineer to leaving oh the gas God. on and doors open. His hearing deteriorated as well as short-term memory. So wow. there, there's kind of evidence of that one. But some of the other symptoms or, or, or low-level symptoms that you can... When they say you can do something about now, it... Now, I don't want to scare anyone quiet, because... Quiet, early symptoms. Just, what just one about. thing here, which is really, really important, mm. because so many women that are going through the menopause, perimenopause and menopause, go into a terrible depression thinking they've got Alzheimer's because many of these oh, symptoms you also get with menopause. Yeah. So that's why it's so important that you see a doctor if you're perimenopausal, if you've got any one of the... 45 different symptoms that can show your perimenopausal. Yeah. And if your periods have gone a bit erratic and you're over 45, go and see a doctor because early estrogen can really help with all of this stuff. Brain fog and sleeplessness and irritability. and But one of the more subtle ones here, early signs of dementia include changes to language, behaviours and responses to social cues. Yeah, well, do you want some of the other low level, quiet sort of, what do they call them? Quiet early symptoms. Withdrawing from hobbies or family. Mm. That got me a little bit nervous because I'm, you know, I quite like to, I don't withdraw from hobbies, but I sort of withdraw. No, this one I thought maybe you were getting, not understanding sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that on purpose, being sarcastic. I know, darling. You, but you didn't get it. Darling, I did. <laughs> I just find it funny. <laughs> Sent not understanding sarcasm. Early signs of dementia include changes to language, as you said, behaviours and responses to social cues. You just said that. Uh, if you find your sense of humour has changed significantly, I can't believe that. It might be worth getting medical advice. Isn't that fascinating? This is an Oxford University study. But I know what they mean about that. Like, there's a couple of people that I know that I suspect have early dementia. And there's a kind of... Oh, a blankness. There's a deadness yeah, I know what you mean. back to, to funny things that wasn't there before. Yeah. So I think that that... Somebody once described it as like a dimming of the light of the... You know, when you put the dimmer switch on ever so slightly, that dimming too. Yeah. Um, uh, something else, forgetting... I mean, this is one that I think we're all familiar with. Forgetting what things are called or what they're for. And I remember... Well, no, but think about that. What? It's not like... No, no, no. I was about to use the example of a friend of mine, Pete's mum. He said it's not like people forget where they've put the keys, keys or, no. where they, or they forget someone's name. He, he, he knew it was really bad when his mum went to leave the living room and she didn't know what a door or a door handle yeah. was. And that really God. broke him to pieces because it's a total Well, I had I had something happen the other day. I went into the shower and used the shower a thousand times. And I looked at it for a split second. I didn't know which was the one was the water and which one was the heat. The thingy, yeah, yeah. Did you, do you ever get that? We no. go, and you've hit the wrong one. Right. And so I was like, I was going absolutely mad. And I thought, oh. oh God, you've just stumbled down the stairs. You were half pissed last night. You've yeah. just woken up. This isn't dementia. And, yeah. and apparently somebody I know who ran, oh, I, I'll tell you who it was. It was, oh, it's not somebody I know, it was Davina. There was an article I read with Davina, and you know, her father has dementia, and I think her grandmother had dementia, Alzheimer's. And she said she rang up the doctor, and it was something similar to that, that I've just said, so I'm terrified, you know, this is it, I've got Alzheimer's. She said, if you had Alzheimer's, you wouldn't be ringing me to ask that. That's a good point. You, you don't wouldn't have be going, oh my God, why the hell? Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, I didn't know which one was the shower. You just wouldn't have known which one was the shower. But how do you come been... to, but do you, what I've always wondered is, do you emerge from that confusion with a retrospective knowledge that you were confused? I don't think so. Because Michelle Maine, I've just seen your comment, I could not put the dog's drinking fountain together yesterday, but I couldn't do it and we have had it for years. See, I think, I don't necessarily think one-off occasions are anything to worry about. It's, it's repetition, isn't it? It's repetition, mm. it's a constancy, it's it happening in different scenarios. But you're right, does anyone know, with, a, with someone struggling with dementia, or, yes, Claros 3 dementia is an umbrella term, isn't it, for many different forms of dementia. Yeah. Um, does anyone know if there's an awareness that one's forgotten? So, I mean, I didn't really ask Pete whether when his mum didn't know what a door handle was. Did she know she didn't Did she know, know she didn't want a, Yeah, exactly. I mean, was she anxious that she didn't know what this thing she was She was confused. That, that's she, the thing. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, uh, so let's just some of the final uh, change in mood. I mean, that's so hard to kind of, you know, they, they suggest a referral for talking well, it's therapy. In, it's interesting they say the beginnings, if somebody appears depression to have the beginnings dementia. of dementia and they are depressed, it's very important to treat their depression and to treat it as aggressively, aggressively as, as possible. possible. That doesn't mean everyone who's got depression has got dementia, and it doesn't mean everyone with depression is no. more than likely to No, no, dementia. but they're talking about the depression that comes yeah. alongside Alzheimer's. It's interesting they say. I've heard that some... Because I, I wonder if that's because inaction, isolation, removing yourself from people, all those things that can come mm. along with depression, of course, exacerbates the brain, doesn't it? Because one of the really important things is that you keep social interactions going and that yeah, you're yeah. part of a community and that yes. you're, all of that, that stuff all is very important. Bobby Jackson, this is a, an interesting thing, he uh, says, the analogy is like a bookcase. The latest memories are shaken off the top shelf when the bookcase is rocked and early memories prevail. Well, what about this? Wow. I haven't got any early memories. That's not true. That's not strictly Mine true. Mine are wiped out. I've noticed them coming back. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember which. Maybe because of my estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed a difference at all with my memory and the oestrogen? Sometimes I, I go, I, oh, wow, I remember... I've, I've overheard you, because you talk, you talk sort of with affection to the girls about things from your past, and I've noticed that happening more often. I've noticed that you'll talk around the kitchen about something from your youth, your childhood or your teenagehood, and I've never heard that before. You haven't done it... You've done it more often recently than you've done before. So you think I've got Alzheimer's? No, I'm saying I think the oestrogen the is helping. Oh. What didn't you understand about no, that? No, because he said the old memories prevail and you shake the one off well, the top Well, that's all. All her recent memories prevail. Is that true? What happened last week? We were in Cornwall. <laughs> yeah, well done. Um, here's a curious one. Gum disease. Uh, the link between oh. oral health or gum disease and an increased risk of cognitive decline is mixed, says the university. Now, I've thought about this, says the University of Oxford, Oxford because, um, where is it? It says here that people who have received better dental care may have simply enjoyed Looked a healthier lifestyle, better, yeah. which tends to be associated. So all other elements in your life, if they've been healthier, then the evidence is going to be that your teeth are going to be better. Yeah. So there's that. Um, there's a lot of evidence in the power of turmeric. And my yeah. dad has eaten turmeric every day and he has the most extraordinary memory. When you think he's had a number of strokes, yeah. all that his memory strong. is amazing, both short term and long term. Yeah. I'm convinced it's to do with his turmeric. But here's some. <laughs> you are. <on. laughs> here's some quick fire um, elements to what, you, what may happen to you that you don't need to worry about. When not to worry. Sometimes forgetting names or appointments, but remembering them later. Occasionally needing help with oven settings or the TV remote. Who that's are, good. That's Michelle like, Main. You that's, were like, that's like my that's like my shower thing the other day. Listen just to occasionally. Us. We sound like a pair of old mumbling idiots. Misplacing things from time to time and retracing your steps. Do it all the all time. time. Making the occasional bad decision, which I did in the vlog recently, like running out of petrol. Do you remember the shock on everyone's face? Couldn't believe that. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I was in the middle of kind of weird bipolar shit. Becoming irritable if your routine is disrupted. That's you. You get very irritable. Darling, I've never had a routine in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Um, before we do your welcomes and your happy birthdays, the final story in our title is uh, Have a Go Heroes. Frozen Eggs. Uh, oh, God, there's frozen eggs as well. Jesus, we've got lots of sto too, too many stories for the, for the time. Uh, can I just say, our hearts go out to these two guys in Stoke who prevented a girl from being raped... Um, early in the morning, and they were both hospitalised. One of them's face was stamped on so severely... Oh, my God! ...that he's ha having to have re reconstructive surgery. Um, but this happened in stoke on Trent. It happened in a, an area... Where did it happen? Uh, 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 Hanley, stoke on Trent. Two men stepped in to stop two girls being raped, were left seriously oh injured God. after being beaten up, one needing facial reconstruction. Uh, the hospitalised pair have been held heroes by friends and family as well as others on social media. Uh, the two heroes were turned on after they intervened and were left unconscious in Hanley. Isn't that awful? Isn't that awful? Just awful. Um, and so, yeah, uh, friends and relatives are taken to Facebook to pay tribute. And it was just another one of those stories that you've got to be careful. And yet, at the same time, you want to make sure... I just can't believe it. You know, I if you feel sick to my stomach. Because it's, it's like an unresolvable dilemma, isn't it? You see something awful happening, you try and do something, and you potentially die. I think what they maybe should have done was phone the police, but I suppose they're just reacting and they're 
And in the time really that they rang the police, way. in the time that they rang the police, I, I guess they thought the girls would, would uh, become victims to, to rape. That's I mean, the most disgusting story. I wish we hadn't heard that. Sorry. I, I, well, it's just, it's, it just made me think, again, you know, on the one hand, it's really laudable if you do it, but on the other, it's like, oh, my God, be God, careful. For wild. God's sake, be it's careful. Um, and the fi final story tonight is, uh, it was, they were talking a lot about it on LBC, which was um, frozen eggs, being able to free freeze eggs, sperm and embryos for 55 years. What do you think of that? It's quite, does that mean, that, does that mean if you store them at 35, you could become a mother at 90? I just think there has to be a cut off point. Do you, what do you think, fair. guys? Do you think that's, do you think there has to be a cut off point? Yeah, I do. I mean, there was a woman who rang in on LBC who said the joy of it at the age of 30 was suddenly the, you know, the biological clock didn't sound like it was so loud in her head. Hmm. But presumably you still don't need to go to yeah, 55 years. But she's 30, years. isn't she? So, you know. I don't want a baby at 90, says Jenny Ward. Hmm. Um, I, don't, I think I... we don't have to do everything because we can. You know, oh, Alison think... Fisher agrees with you, yeah. I think, for me, I think really... No later than 50. The, oh, 50 years old? Mm. Yeah, I think it should be sort of a shifting age thing, maybe. Mm. It seems odd, doesn't it, to go Because otherwise that. you're having a child and they're almost definitely going to have to look after you Sky at Lee quite a young same. point, and I just don't think that that's fair. And someone somewhere says it could mean twins could techni technically be born decades apart. Weird. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah. There's got, we can't have everything, and very, very yeah, sadly... Some people can't have kids and some people can't have this. And it's, it's awful and it's heartbreaking. And don't get me wrong, I yeah. have such gratitude. You know, having had miscarriages and believing that I wasn't going to have kids and all of that. But if you were told huge. that you had a limit at 50, would you have accepted Abs it? Uh, well, I would have had a limit of 45. Right. I wouldn't have okay. had past 45. But, you know, I, I think it... I, I just think past 50. What do you think, guys? Russ, you had an age. Put up an age. What age? Yeah, put up the age. Russ says, I have a two-year-old at 41 and I'm shattered. <laughs> there you go, Russ. Yeah, exactly. uh, give us an age. What age do you think it should go? So, yeah, it seems an odd number of years, because even if you were mm. 20, you'd be getting to 75. 45, 40, 45. This is the age to reach to. 40. No more over 50. Mm. 50 too old. 55, oh, Lucy Kitson. This? Nicola Higgins, I have vascular dementia at 47. Started oh. with numbness, then concentration and, and words, words and memory. memory. Oh, oh Nicola. sweetheart, I didn't know that. No. Oh, sending you a big, big hug. Yeah. Oh Everyone send Nicola a big hug. I didn't know that, Nicola. Obviously, we know your name very well, but... Mm. God. Up to 60, says Bobby Jackson. Men do it later as dads. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's weird, isn't it? Charlie Chaplin became a dad at 82 or something. But I don't think that's right either. No, I don't. I, I, just, I, mean, I mean, as Woody I'm not Allen just saying said, this is just for women. He had a baby, but it was too old to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so happy birthday. Right, um, we have, hang on a minute, we have Erin's 16th birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Erin. Happy birthday to you. Guys, there's 800 of you watching. Hit the like button just under my shoulder here if you've enjoyed spending time with us. Yeah. If this is your first time to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Everyone's loving hearing the birds, aren't they? Aren't they just gorgeous? Can you hear them? Well, you know, we've got a... Such strong bird song. Listen. Yeah. Listen. We might need to do a garden watch Shh. again. Happy birthday for Ellie. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ellie. Happy birthday, birthday to you. And we have some welcomes to do. Coco is loco. Coco is loco. Coco is loco. Coco is loco. Welcome, Coco loco, loco, loco. Welcome, Coco, 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 loco. Welcome. Coco, Coco, Loco. That's a good ringtone. If, <gasps> imagine every time you get a phone call from Uber Eats, that rings. Um, Amin M. Happy birthday. No, a welcome to Family Guest. Amin M, Amin M, Amin M. Well. Amin M, I hope you use that on your phone too. 
Charlotte P. Charlotte P. P. Knows where to, to the do P. a P. Welcome Charlotte P. 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 Charlotte P. With Charlotte P. That's not really nice to bring we into it. It's just a separate one. Oh, Charlotte. Welcome Charlotte P. Welcome Charlotte P. So Welcome Charlotte P. Oh, that was like a Helter Skelter there. Kate Payne, Kate Payne, she loves Kate, to kiss Kate, Kate, in the rain. Kate, Kate, Kate Payne, Kate, Kate, Kate Payne, she Kate, loves to do Kate, the dishes Kate, in the Kate, rain. Kate. Don't know where any of this comes from. Melody says, well, how do you join the members area? Okay, so the members area Ooh. is where you get extra content. It's 50 pence a week and we are never going to ever increase that Even so that's the thing you have to know yeah so um and there's a little join square underneath where we're sitting here and you can press on that now if you've got a really old phone it won't work so you might have to join on a new phone and then you can get it on your phone or on someone else's laptop, yeah, and then or you laptop come back. Or um and two members we are discussing oh, and looking nice at you, certain Froby. certain rewards for certain periods of yes, time that you've been with us we're going to have a little but extra us michelle, yeah us and michelle are going to have a, a bit have of a powwow meeting on how we can give you presents yeah, exactly. So, um, lots Thank of you, love, guys. guys. Thank you. Lovely to see you. And we'll yeah. see you again tomorrow. Take care, guys. Lots of love. Lots of love.